but the Jezebel spirit has already been here. The Jezebel spirit opened our event. This is a rebuke and a correction of no one. This is an observation. The same thing that's used in a strip club for women who have the Jezebel spirit to seduce men. Well, that didn't take long, did it? Everyone's talking about what happened at the, the the Stronger Men's Conference where Mark Driscoll raises a fuss about what's happening and then walks off. Now, I made a video covering it, talking about, well, there's some questions need to be asked. I get the fact that there was an open rebuke, and I was fine with that. That part was okay with me. I think there was, there was a rush from the people who love or admire or who kind of have a denominational or a theological bent that leans towards what Mark Driscoll believes and so forth, this whole spirit of Jezebel and so forth, and it's outrage. Again, I was bothered by that. I didn't know all the details about the guy that did that and so forth. I had no idea he was a, a, a LGBTQ male stripper, what have you, and, and so forth. Didn't know. Uh, my only issue was some of the things just didn't seem right, didn't know, didn't know what was going on. Uh, but my only point was, if you're going to raise a fuss, you know what was happening prior you should have had the conversation. I and mean, then what did people say? Well, you don't know if he didn't have the conversation. I have no idea. He should have had the conversation. I don't know the man to be lying or telling the truth, but he should have had the conversation because you just simply look at the at the advertisement. You know what they're going to do. This isn't something new. This isn't the first year they had this thing. And so anyway, well, after all of this outrage and so forth, and he's a great man and he's a hundred percent correct and so forth. My question was one, did he handle it the correct way, which I thought the rebuke should have came, but you should have also, if you had the opportunity to, to express your concerns first, you should have expressed your concerns. Well, immediately after that, and I don't know who this other pastor is, this pastor John so-and-so, I don't know, of James River Church, don't know much about them. Apparently this guy has got some doctrinal issues as well, uh, that's maybe a little bit too charismatic for the Bible. That being the case, I'll leave that aside. I want to address this, and that is, his walking back of his rebuke after he's after he's sat down or after he's told to sit down or what have you uh people come to his defense and he's the greatest thing since sliced bread well is he now now that he's come back on stage and all this talk about uh this spirit of jezebel and so forth and all these things well what happened to that conversation mark the prophetic voice to our generation Nothing about what was said changes that. And I, Mark and I talked. We went outside where we could be alone and we could talk. And we've reaffirmed our friendship. And Mark, I want you to know, you're a gift to the kingdom. You're a gift to James River. You've been a gift to Debbie and I. You've helped us. So what we have is the, these two men are having a conversation. I guess they reconciled, had a conversation. Uh, about their differences. Now, I said earlier, I didn't understand why he was there in the first place. That's my really my bigger issue is because you cannot complain about going to the circus and then going to the circus and then complain about the clowns there. And that's what happened. You went to a circus and then complained about there being more clowns. You put yourself in that situation. So when the Bible says, how can two walk unless they agree? Well, apparently these two agree and everything is okay. I don't know what the conversation was about, but apparently Mark is not as vociferous uh, as he was prior. The same thing still happened. As a matter of fact, you have more time to digest it and you come back on stage and you just hash things out. I honor, respect, and love and admire you as the father of this house. This is the greatest men's event, I believe, in the country right now. It's stayed here for a long time. And I, I wanna thank you for having such a great heart for men. And I want to thank you that it starts with your sons. And your sons are great men. I love you and I love your sons. And in, when I was teaching, I just kept seeing that. And maybe it was the Lord and maybe it's just me and I'm peculiar. Um, no, 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 no. We're not going to do division. What we're going to do is we're going to try and model how brothers can work together for this. I believe what I should have done since I had another session, I was thinking about it. It wasn't in my notes. I didn't intend to go there. I was up late praying for the men. I just kept seeing it. And I should have, between sessions, talked to you 
rather than just verbal processing on the stage. Again, the, the way that you can come together, the Bible says that you shouldn't be bound together with uh, with unbelievers or un, unequally yoked. What fellowship does light have with darkness? Well, again, the outrage about this darkness wasn't so much of an outrage after all. It seems to be a little bit more contrived, a little bit more fake than we want to, than people want to let on. That's why you don't rush to a particular judgment other than the things that are obvious and apparent. The obvious and apparent thing was these things should not be taking place. Not just the the guy uh, on the on the pole and, and, and doing the little acrobatic stuff, but the, the cars and the motorcycles and the boxes and so forth. What, what, what sort of men's conference is that? And so, yeah, you can see why why he was there. He was there because that's his kind. Those are his people. Not that he necessarily supports that, but now you backtrack. And I don't know what the hubbub was that happened behind the scenes, but now you're back once that we're getting more and more information. And I don't know what was said. Frankly, at this point, it doesn't really matter. All I can say is if you know something to be wrong, then you take the necessary steps. You could say something to him private and say, I have concerns about that. And if it doesn't get addressed, then you can still address that later, which is what I thought he should have did. But now all of this, this doesn't seem to look good at all. As a matter of fact, the Bible says you will know them by their fruit that they bear. And so we're seeing the fruit. Think about it. After having some time to think about it even more so, and then having whatever little counsel and conversation, you know what? On second thought, my bad. I was wrong. And so let's just be friends. We don't want division. Well, there's some things that you can divide over. There's some things that there can be some issues and a cutting and, the, and a clear delineation, such as promoting. And I, again, I didn't know at the time people have said that this guy is, is without question uh, an LGBTQ performer. He is there's a lot of sexual innu innuendos behind even his intent. He's a performer somewhere else. Now, how they know that, I don't know. But apparently that's that's the truth. And so even now, Martin Driscoll knows that. But it doesn't seem to be much of an issue now. It doesn't seem to be as big of an issue, which makes you wonder when people are saying that uh, he didn't know ahead of time. Well, how did he know at the time that he gave his 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 uh, speech that he was uh, an LGBTQ performer or what have you? And now I don't know. Maybe someone told him. I don't know. But the outrage shouldn't. But the outrage should not have subsided. But again, this is par for the course. So people with this outrage, you know, they're outraged by uh, the the result you know what they stand for by the lingering fruit that results from it. And to go back on stage nullifies everything that he said. As a matter of fact, all of those folks that wanted to defend him nullifies their defense as well. This is who Mark Driscoll is. This is why even more so aside from his doctrinal issues, this is why you do not follow this man. Amen.